I would like to employ many of you in a big national newspaper because your capacity to work to deadlines within 30 seconds and still produce very high quality work is amazing. So I thank you for that because uh, the last slide is just going on to the computer at this moment, which is uh, a phenomenal achievement given the number of work. I'm going to work across the program um, as it's been set out this time so you can see when you're coming up. So uh, Science for Access, which is enhancing access and quality of experience. How can science contribute to provide more and better access to heritage? Group A. Can I say it was really nice if you can introduce your group or at least the nationalities that were in the group? Uh, it was a very nice feel when uh, colleagues did that yesterday. Group A, we have uh, France, UK, China, the Netherlands, Japan, and Belgium represented, uh, and the USA represented, uh, and uh, Katrina Simila from Incrum. Uh, our discoveries access is fundamental to cultural heritage. Access must be defined in a broad way with input from social and physical sciences research. Access must be managed comprehensively in diverse ways. Uh, there are many different types of, we, we dream that there are many different types of access tailored to place and audience appealing to all senses in emotionally and intellectually engaging ways. Science for access includes non-specialists in the practice of conservation and conservation science. For instance, in industrial archaeology practitioners, in, in, in the case of industrial archaeology, the holders of traditional knowledge, the engineers and the people familiar with how these things were made and maintained. We understand, we dream that we understand what attracts people to cultural heritage and how they would like to access it. We dream that existing technologies are optimized to render cultural heritage freely accessible in all its aspects. We dream that we understand the physical tolerances of heritage for access. And we dream that science for access is a vibrant human and engaging topic in communication style and tone, not cold and objective. How do we achieve that? Well, this is a difficult topic that needed analogies from other fields, and especially cooking shows, in our case. Um, the creation of a we, we, we think that the creation of a community forum, including communication scientists, social scientists, physical scientists, interpretation experts, conservators and curators, slash heritage manager, sharing big data, metadata, and great literature could facilitate uh, this discourse. Uh, we think that it's necessary to include communication training in conservators and conservation scientists courses and CPDs. And uh, we think that also uh, we need to develop tools, uh, in some cases improve existing ones, uh, risk assessment methodologies to update old concepts and receive wisdoms, uh, for instance the light thresholds, to efficiently and effectively manage access. We concluded that, as well as facilitating and enhancing access and meaning of cultural heritage, conservation science can itself increase people's interest and enjoyment of cultural heritage, especially if they are given the tools to understand scientific aspects, uh, underscoring the inclusiveness, uh, the necess necessity for an inclusiveness uh, in all of these uh, approach. Group B. Group B, group B consists of, of Switzerland, Malaysia, Portugal, Italy, Spain, Canada, Korea, and the Netherlands. Uh, well, um, you already heard this morning, um, we have to uh, communicate, we have to digitize, um, we have issues with language, so we have to find a common language. 
and uh, we also have to involve local communities. Well, what we think is very relevant is that conservation science <coughs> will, be a, will be acknowledged as a relevant and well-defined discipline. We should feel it ourselves this way, but we should also be validated by other, other fields of research. Um, we also feel that the, the different um, parts of our work, art, science, culture, have drifted apart in the last uh, decades, so they should be unified again. And then we have, of course, global tools um, for open exchange, so we, we have large um, opportunities to facilitate our work and to get the community again and to to restore this bond between the different parts of our work. I see someone from our group nodding, so I, I, I guess I'm on the right way. Yes? Okay. <laughs> it's always difficult if, uh, to be a reporter and then uh, think, well, I hope we, uh, you say the right thing. Well, what we also did is try to make a graph, a circle, to, to see where are we. So when we start with a domain, we have to build the domain as different um, all of us, as we sit here, have to have to build a domain which is self-consistent and which we, which also, um, uh, uh, which also helps to revive unity of art and science. And this should be an established and recognised domain. Once we have this domain, and of course a, this circle is an ongoing process, we need to establish a common language. And all the data we have should be open, but they should also be kept in a durable way. What we see is that often data are made, they are gathered, and, well, you have new software and you can't reach them again. So that's a problem to be solved. Once we have a common language and we have a, a lot of da data, the, um, we, we can ex exchange better with other fields. So it was stressed again and again, yesterday and today, how important is it, it is for us to be in touch with society and with other fields of research and you can do this when you, you are clear about your data and your aims. And also this will lead to a validation of our field of research. This will also lead to a better interaction with society, which is also where it was stressed again and again how important it is for our work to, to, to stay in touch with society and to have an interaction because society at large legitimizes our work. And society will also pose questions. And where can they pose their questions about heritage and heritage research better than to our domain? Thank you. And uh, supporting sustainability through learning from and supporting the use of diverse materials and approaches in conservation, Group A. Someone own up, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, our group, I'm from Belgium. There was Marie from France, a colleague from Korea, Senegal, Switzerland, Poland, Spain, and USA, New Zealand. What do we dream? We dream about a world in which various diverse sources of knowledge, such, such as traditional knowledge, social sciences, and material sciences are inseparable. We dream about a world of equality, in which we use adaptable and feasible approaches in conservation in terms of ethics, methods, and expertise. We have a lot of dreams. We dream about a world in which conservation science explores and supports diversity. We dream about a profession where social challenges and sustainability drive our research into solution-oriented results and not problem-oriented results. 
We dream about a world in which conservation science is adequately and fully recognized in the conservation field. We have eight dreams. I made it seven, but we do have eight dreams. We dream about a world where conservation science can collect, analyze, and publish traditional knowledge into, in order to design and develop sustainable conservation methods. Let's dream about a world in which conservation science addresses the needs of tangible and intangible heritage equally. Um, I have less slides here. Uh, so, what are the things that uh, as a community we can do and um, what is needed to make these dreams uh, a future reality? Um, we were thinking about delivering academic papers and policies which focus on traditional knowledge and support global issues such as sustainability and diversity. Um, recognizing other forms of research results, for example, documentation and recordings, as a valid means of dissemination of knowledge. And we repeat our dream a little bit here, but um, I insist that we should review traditional knowledge and practices by uh, analyzing these processes through conservation science programs so that, that it can be applied in practice. Thank you. And Group B. Thank you. The group Diversity B, and this uh, can be illustrated by the number of countries in alphabetical order. Australia, Belgium, France, Japan, Mexico, the Netherlands, Sweden, United Kingdom and ICROM, which is not a country. <laughs> okay. Diversity B, which discoveries? You've heard uh, some of those this afternoon. We explored a lot of uh, traditional and new materials and techniques, and we emphasized that it was important to maintain a long-term view while recognizing that conservation passes through shorter steps and many hands. And to document this is crucial, and to evaluate this is to uh, better understand that long-term uh, process. We discussed about the concept of maintenance and uh, that we should engage stakeholders and uh, that conservation, conservation scientists should uh, be engaged and integrated in the heritage community from the start of the project. And the last point we wanted to emphasize is the culture of caring for culture, the fourth pillar of sustainability, according to us and UNESCO. So the dreams, uh, the first was to expand the focus of conservation science to heritage research, including other disciplines and different traditions and approaches. The second is to complement the notion of research with mediation, culture brokerage, brokerage and co-conservation, so to expand that notion. The third is uh, research into traditional conservation methods and materials and their wider impact for society. So it can be an alternative. It can provide choices and alternatives. Linked to that is to research modern and new conservation methods and materials, again, to have choices and alternatives and uh, documentation of these processes is crucial. Okay, what are the things we can do? First is uh, invest in communication and coordination, sharing and combining existing initiatives, platforms, methodologies, results uh, that exist already and that are new. And uh, we should have the courage to publish truthfully and honestly, including about failures, so we can learn from them. Second point is that uh, we should share information and that information should be validated through major conservation institutions. Think about the Getty or ICROM. The third is using new methods to enhance the experience of materiality, visualizations, facsimiles, and, and so on. 
And the fourth is to design a heuristic methodology for conservation. This was the things we wanted to do. Thank you. And the next group was recognizing and adapting to changing cultural heritage values. Emerging heritage. Emerging heritage. Yeah, I'm representing a lot of women and one man from the UK, France, the Netherlands, Canada, USA, Korea, Brazil, and China. And we were looking at emerging heritage, recognizing and adapting to changing cultural heritage values. So we have discovered that emerging heritage includes, amongst others, new materials, new formats, intangible and social processes and newly recognized or re-recognized heritage. And there's a shift from conserving the container to conserving the content and the context, which requires an emphasis on societal values. And to support conservation of this emerging heritage, we require an inclusive set of sciences. And then we started dreaming, and Eastern wisdom brought us to the dream that we do not want to be the tail of the dragon, but the head of the chicken. <laughs> the chicken seems to be bigger than you think, actually. For that, we need to be proactive, engaging, influential, and sharper about what's coming at us and what the problems of the future will be. And what we then want to achieve. Know your problem before you can work on solutions. We need to advance questions of what our heritage values are, what actually makes heritage, what the emerging values will be. They may be different than what we think now, and who the stakeholders are that will attribute value. And we dream of leaders and advocates that make a strong, clear voice for funders and decision-making makers. Because in the end, we want to integrate heritage conservation on an equal level with environmental conservation in a development where values of society are leading. This is going back to this morning's keynote. Now, very practically, uh, we have a high ambition. So we would want to develop heritage strategies that include an understanding of what makes heritage, analyzes values and stakeholders, does intelligence mapping to see what do we know, what do we need to know, and that promotes involvement of all sciences. We also would want to develop mechanisms for disseminating and sharing knowledge, for identifying problems, for example, with a technology watch, what's new, what's coming, and how can we use that and adapt it. And document information and knowledge about heritage that's arising and that may fade away quickly. We don't have the tangible, but we need to know what it was, what it is that we want to keep, the character determining features. And how do you make those accessible? That hooks on to one of the earlier presentations. And we would want to assume an advisory role towards creators and the keepers of future heritage. The public now has the collections of the future. We want to reach out to them as well and find these charismatic champions that promote conservation and advance the strategies. That's it. And... Uh science for the macro scale using skills, tools and knowledge from fields outside conservation to support site regional scale heritage decision making. Okay. 
So our group was composed in alphabetical order. I have changed my order. Um, Australia, Belgium, Chile, uh, China, Colombia, India, France, South Africa, and I have forgotten UK, oh, United Kingdom and United States of America combined in the same person. Thank you for John. <laughs> so, uh, so, science for macro scale in a short way. What discoveries have our group made today that you would like to, that we would like to share with you? So it's already, we already have given these uh, three sentences this morning. Science can help decision making at every scale with innovative use of existing technologies, for example, GIS, GPS, mobile technologies, respecting, and this was an important point focused by our uh, people from Chile, in Colombia, respecting regional and local specificity. Um, we, we see an evolution from closed ex expert systems to open source systems, which means open softwares and open inputs with participation of new information providers at local level and need for sustainable platforms with a continuous updating and maintenance, which, which is, of course, very, very important. And the, the positive implication, our dreams, um, our dreams are to, as many of, of the groups, and it's not really original and specific to our group, improve communication, connectivity, and understanding between local stakeholders, managers, and disciplines for, from other fields for heritage manage, management at different levels. Tailoring new, simpler interfaces through mobile technologies for decision makers and the public use. And finally, establishing protocols for site management, for example, rules for decision making, that could be included in national or regional regulations and laws. And what can we do? So, at various scales and through local and regional engagement, uh, to identify the multi-sectoral mapping involving a large range of disciplines, because we, ha we are at, at a large scale, so we had to involve geography, statistics, natural heritage, regional planning, computer science, space science, and actions required for heritage decision making, and to innovatively adapt accessible technologies to achieve the above actions. For example, there is a UN program using mobile technologies and we can be inspired by this program to, 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 to adapt these, uh, these very common technologies used by anybody, usable by anybody. And finally, to create resource banks of technologies and human capital to provide expertise, training, and technology transfer for the better use of these technologies. Thank you. Thank you very much for the quality of work which you seem to have done so seamlessly and so well today um, with a huge amount of input from around the table which we couldn't have really hoped for more. I, oh, another group. Which one is this? Green, we've got green. Oh, how could we forget you guys? Where are you? I've got green A. There we go. Come on, green A. So this is how science can contribute to green policies for conservation. I skipped one. Which was it? Yeah. Do I? Okay. Thank you. Please go ahead. Um, thank you. I'm representing a group of people from a number of countries, and I'm not intelligent enough to put it in alphabetical order, so I'm just going to read it <laughs> in the order that it's on the list here in front of me. Um, we had in our group people from Germany, from Italy slash the United States of America, from Greece slash Qatar. We had a lot of slashes in our group also. Greece slash Qatar, Portugal, Sweden, 
India, the United Kingdom, Korea, and ECROM, which, as we learned earlier today, is not a country, um, <laughs> but is perhaps 132 countries, actually, so it makes up a larger number. Um, so on behalf of the group, um, what discoveries did we make? Actually, we presented this earlier, but um, should I do it again? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, we discovered that science uh, can help us to better understand materials and their deterioration and to create tailor-made solutions for objects and sites. Uh, so, for example, the creation of specific microclimates for objects rather than a single climate within an entire museum, just as one example. And that this can help us to reduce energy consumption and also to minimize our, uh, the need for treatments. Um, and this implies the use of appropriate, reasonable standards which fit the object in question. Uh, the second thing that we discovered was that science can help us in the study of traditional technologies for more e energy efficiency. Um, because in all places, there are, um, they have their traditional adaptive strategies to their specific cl climates. And that we have to learn from these traditional environments uh, because they have been tested and used over time. Uh, the third uh, thing that we discovered was that science can develop more green, uh, that is less toxic, less dangerous materials and technologies for conservation treatments. And the last thing that we discovered uh, this, uh, this morning was that by valorizing traditional technologies, that we are using ancient knowledge and therefore conserving our cultural heritage in and of itself, and that we need to have scientific investigation which can help us to determine which traditional technologies or practices are actually green um, in terms of the environment, in terms of human health and efficiency. Um, and for example, uh, examples of those included traditional craftsmanship, use of traditional biocides, traditional climate controls, and, and the like. So that was what we discovered. Um, positive implications uh, are dreams, as it were. We dream that conservation scientists are able to do adequate research to advance green conservation principles, and that includes learning from the past practices and past mistakes. We also dream that conservation professionals can be advocates for green conservation using scientific knowledge uh, that we have already developed or that we create in order to better, better argue for green solutions to people taking decisions. And those people taking decisions, we had a little bit of a discussion about that. It includes uh, sort of civil servants, uh, you know, all the various decision makers. And I would add also even down to the level of, of uh, communities and individual, uh, individual, uh, individuals who, who have their own, uh, their, their own house or their own building that they're taking care of. Um, we dream that conservation scientists are working with traditional craftsmen learning from them and embracing their knowledge, but also enhancing their skills using new uh, advanced scientific knowledge. And through critical analysis, having them uh, then participate in the, de the decision-making process in a meaningful way. And it, you know, the, the concept being that we are enhancing our teamwork in that way. And then finally, our last dream is that we build environments that are created uh, for the heritage, both objects and buildings, which are more energy efficient, uh, through adaptation to the specific needs and deterior deterioration mechanisms of that particular object. And this includes a more uh, rational approach to climate control, including both traditional and contemporary technologies. And the examples that we used were things like wind towers, learning, from, learning better climate control through traditional, traditional um, uh, construction technologies, um, such as wind towers in the in the Middle East, which uh, which bring cooling uh, down into the into buildings, or or through, um, for example, uh, wraparound porches in some places, which uh, enhance airflow and create a more comfortable environment. So the, the the idea is to learn from those from those existing technologies. And then finally, what do we think we can do as a community? Well, we want to develop flexible legislation which can ensure that heritage values are protected as part of energy efficient standards. We want to raise the status of craftspeople through dialogue and, uh, and training, training of craftspeople but also training of us in what the, what the craftspeople are doing. 
Um, we want to develop research projects to be able to harvest scientific knowledge uh, and advances in other fields that we can use to improve green conservation. Uh, examples would be uh, taking information from the energy efficiency field, but the other one that I thought was much more interesting was there seems to be a whole line of research related to um, to actually enhancing or, or making more quick the deterioration of garbage. By doing that, by learning about the, the ways that we can enhance deterioration mechanisms on something that we don't want, we can actually take that knowledge and we can use it to actually instead reverse it and protect uh, or, or protect from deterioration uh, things that we want to conserve. So it's, it, it's kind of an interesting uh, reverse of the, of the knowledge. Um, uh, we also said within that that we also need to be able to translate and interpret that information and make it understandable to a broader audience. We can also develop predict predictive uh, molecular aging models which, uh, that correlate with physical performance in order to be able to advocate for extending the lifetime of cultural heritage objects. And finally, uh, the last thing that we think we can do is develop long-term monitoring systems, uh, which include uh, damage indicators as a reference that we can use then for determining energy efficiency. So that's it. Thank you. And Group B. Group B, green. Oh, coming. Okay, uh, my group consists of uh, representation from Canada, Brazil, Italy, Indonesia, uh, Netherlands, France, and Sweden, and uh, Ikram as well. Uh, and uh, as we said earlier, we uh, both uh, made our discoveries and dreamt at the same time. Um, and here they are. We want the conservation community that conservation science serves to be fully aware of how it uh, can contribute to sustainability. Uh, we also, um, we, we can combine ethically and economically powerful arguments for sustainable behavior open an interdisciplinary approach, including new disciplines, creating broader and integrated approaches in developing new research projects. And uh, we connect this with uh, positive implications um, for the cultural heritage conservation. And um, we think that if we are aware, we can also promote the social and economic and environmental aspects of preserving the existing cultural heritage uh, more easily. Um, we can also improve our uh, risk management of cultural heritage uh, with a broader perspective. Uh, we can also engage a broader community to achieve our goal of uh, implementing green conservation. And uh, this is what we think that we can and maybe should do. Uh, we should start a global network for green conservation scientists. And their function should be to coordinate research, uh, to communicate, and to advocate. And we recommend uh, that green conservation should be the theme of an international conference uh, within the EC EEC and or a theme of an ICOM CC working group. And as you can see, we also had ideas about connecting this group to uh, ICOM or ICOMAS. Uh, we also think that it's important to already, already now start to educate future conservators and conservation science, scientists within sustainability. Um, and to develop and extend tools for uh, um, assist decision making uh, and this we think that we can contrib contrib contribute with um, for example within risk management analysis uh, predict predictive predict sorry English is not my first language uh, predict Oh, yeah, you can read models, uh, new metric, and indicators. 